This is the Dirty Monkey watching Dirt Live. Hey, welcome back to Dirt Live. We're here with Steve Oligas. Steve, welcome to the show, Dirt Live, man. Hey, thanks for having me, George. This is awesome. Well, kind of neat being here at your dealership in Las Vegas and uh, great hospitality. Well, yeah, I didn't have to drive far. No, it's kind of nice for you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, let's, let's just start out with Steve Oligas as a young man, uh, how you got involved in off-road. You know what? Uh, it was, uh, I was 11 years old, and uh, the body shop manager uh, wrote a book called The Off-Road Racer. A lot, of, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of people have it, and it's a hardback book. And uh, he invited uh, my dad and I to come out to race. I was 11 years old, and I'll tell you, it was, it was, as soon as I got there, I knew this is what I had to do. And, uh, and uh, after that, I went to the mid-400. And, uh, you know, as growing up as a little kid in uh, Vegas, it was like a national holiday to go to tech inspection. Everybody just, you just ditched school and went. You know, your parents took you. So um, I think it was, that's how it all started, and I knew that one day I'd be racing, and it's about as simple as that. Now, you know, at that time, your dad owned Team, or not Team Ford, but Friendly Ford. Friendly Ford. Right. And, you know, you got a dad that ha owns a dealership. You'd think you'd have the best of everything, but he really made you work for it. Yeah, my dad's super cool. Uh, you know, he said, uh, hey, you should race, whatever, but I'm not going to pay for it. So uh, as I got a little bit older, uh, I actually had a good job. I was working uh, for the Herps Brothers, for Terrible Herps, Mr. Herps and all them, and, uh, uh, you know, washing cars, which was a great paying job. It's a great job now, but back then that was like the great job. And uh, actually, all the money I made went to racing, you know, trying to race the Bronco and, and the, uh, the, the cars that I, you know, whatever I could put together. So that's where all my money went. So the, the first race, we, you, you got involved with Brian Collins? Yeah, I owe it to uh, uh, Brian Collins, gave me my first opportunity. And it was a, it was a nine car back then when nine, nine cars were pretty cool with the 1200 CC and the three shocks per wheel. And uh, anyway, it was actually, I think it was Ed Herbst's car and Brian's. Anyway, we pull out a Butch Dean shop. And uh, anyway, I think we decided like a week before we we're going to race it. And the first race was a Snore bottom dollar. I don't think they have the race anymore. We went out and uh, I rolled the car and then uh, got around. And then Brian got in, and then he rolled the car about the same spot I did. Because spectators go, that's weird. Like, what's wrong with this driver? But there's actually two of us. So we went, went ahead, and uh, that was my first, uh, first race was the bottom dollar. Now, so there you graduated to what, you know? Uh, my first uh, big race would be the uh, 1984 Mint 400. And uh, I was 20 years old, and um, it was kind of my, uh, it was actually a birthday present. My mom and dad did. They helped me uh, uh, get some money together to race uh, Hal Seelan's Bronco, uh, which is still around. It's a Holman Moody Bronco. This thing's incredible. It's, they're, they're restoring it for vintage or whatever. It's an awesome truck. And I was fortunate enough to drive it for a season, and, or uh, most of a season. And uh, just a great experience, and I, I owe a lot to Hal Seelan and KBRS, the local guy's uh, Bronco shop here in town, uh, John Carp. So I was really fortunate to have a good deal. So you're in your early 20s. and Right. You know. Then, uh, so I was in college, didn't really have the money, and I realized that I'm just spending everything I have to go racing. And uh, so after that, I got a job in uh, San Diego, where it was kind of the mecca of uh, off-road. That's where a lot of the shops are. Yeah. And, all that and uh, got a job down there uh, Elkhorn Ford selling cars after college and uh, um, met all the racers and um, I, I saved my money I knew I knew I was gonna be doing this and I kept putting money aside and and I knew eventually uh, you know I wanted to you know I was gonna move back to Vegas and then race that was my dream well you know then you, you started racing and of course we had Rob McAkron on the show earlier yeah you guys when did you hook up with Rob uh, you know, uh, Rob and I have been friends for a long time, and, and I don't really know when it was, but uh, uh, we just always got along. You know, he's, Rob's a you know, super cool guy, as you, as you know. Uh, but uh, we just started working together, and he would help me out with uh, um, testing and pre-runners and set up some stuff. And then uh, we actually started racing together um, back in uh, the mid-'90s, and uh, he would fill in and help me and whatever, and he showed me a lot. You know, he's a great instructor. He's worked with several teams. Uh, you, you know, uh, yeah. out there, as you know. But uh, yeah, we, we just raced. We did five seasons in the uh, in the mini truck, the the Ranger with Ford Racing. We did a season in the Raptor. Uh, we raced all kinds of things together. So now the first win, um, kind of a big win for you, 1994. Yeah, I was racing with uh, Tim Casey, uh, who's still racing, uh, doing a great job. And uh, we raced. It was a San Felipe race, one of my, one of my favorites, and uh, uh, we won. 
by nine, le, it was less than 20 seconds over Rod Hall, who finished physically wow. before us. And you know, Rod's a great driver. And uh, it was back when the manufacturers were putting all that money into the uh, stock full class. They had the Hummer teams. There was three Hummers. You had the Jeep, the Jeep teams out there. Then Ford had a bunch of guys. So there, there was a you know 20 something trucks, 30 you know or more. One time we had all the Range Rovers in, but uh, it was it was a cool class. And uh, that was my first big uh, big win. I'm first first win. Yeah, now it's 1994. Right. When you know Sal with Score came out with a trophy truck. Yep. And your good buddy Rob McCachran comes out and wins first race in a trophy truck. Yeah, well, he, he won the championship. In fact, we both won the championship that year because it was a big deal with Ford because they had a lot of their money in the stock full. And, of course, the uh, trophy truck was brand new then. And uh, Rob won the championship, and I still got the Ford Racing pewter keychains with our little you know things on it. But uh, it was a Class 8 that Rob uh, drove then, and uh, I think it was, they called it Nadine, and just um, a gorgeous truck. I got to race with him in that too. So Now, cool what becomes of the racing? Like you said, Ford involvement. Chevy, everybody was big back then, and here comes the Rough Riders. Right, and uh, I used to go out help Rob, uh, you know, pit and you know bring the tire in the middle of the desert and do whatever I can, and you know wear my T-shirt and you know uh, be part of the team. And uh, it was uh, 1994. We just won the Baja 1000, a bunch of races that year. Won the championship and the and the stock full. And we were on a we were having a pre-party before the score banquet, and uh, we took a took a boat out um, in down in San Diego, and we had Frank D'Angelo from BFG who was running the Rough Riders back then. Frank's a, a great friend of mine. Um, anyway, he says, "Hey, uh, how would you like to join the Rough Riders?" And that's how it happened. It was it was right in the harbor of uh, under the Coronado Bay Bridge, and uh, a memorable time. And uh, those are the only two sponsors I've had from day one was Ford and BF Goodrich, and and um, that I've had them since I started. Now you raced a bunch of different classes yeah. and a, with a lot of different people. You know, John Swift. Um, kind of talk about that. Yeah, yeah I, I've been fortunate to be with some uh, some great drivers out there that that I've got to uh, you know have as good friends and learn a lot from. Uh, John Swift being uh, uh, the latest one I've been racing with. Uh, we're super good friends. Uh, we have the two trucks, which we'll get into uh, right. a little bit, but. Uh, uh, race with um, Greg Fouts on the Raptor deal and uh, Bud Brutzman, who, uh, you know, famous pr TV producer. He's a great driver, by the way. Um, Tim Casey, uh, back, you know, brought him in. Uh, we were Rough Riders together. And then, of course, uh, Wayne Lugo. We won the championship in Best in Desert in 07. And um, Rob McCachran. And, uh, yeah, just, I've had a lot of. So let's go over some championships. You got a bunch. Yeah. You know, kind of, let's list. Some of the championships you can kind of yeah uh, we, we won eight championships and uh, all in four trucks and uh, two in score and and five in uh, best in desert um, ranging from the stock full to stock minis to the trophy truck and then um, uh, and then I did a I did the snore last year fun I, it was an unlimited truck the trophy truck there and kind of a fun deal we did so yeah it's, it was it was a great season you know and then probably uh, I think total wins to this date. You know what? Um, I right around 35, so pretty good. Not bad. Yeah. So, still young. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I like. It. I think. I think I am. Yeah. So, okay. Getting so, older though. Yeah. Now you you, you talked about um, some guys like Bud Brutzman. Yeah. And those guys, and I know the Raptor that people are you know around. We'll talk about that in a little bit about at your dealership with the Raptor. Right. But your involvement before it ever came out was huge. Yeah, when I first saw the Raptor, I was pulled into, I'm on a kind of a Skunk Works team with Ford to work on some of these future products, and uh, I got pulled in, everybody goes on a break, and the top guys pulled me away. Actually, they weren't even the top guys, because the real top people didn't even know about this. It was a Skunk Works separate team. They brought me in, I saw the clay model of this Raptor, and I thought, it's a gorgeous truck, but it's not going to happen. Composite front end, uh, vents, uh, the extractor vents on the side, uh, different engine, 6.2 liter, um, special seats, you know, I mean, you know how the Raptors is. And uh, not to mention the Fox uh, internal bypass, big shocks, BFG tires. And um, next thing I know is the project went on, and I, and I was one of the people that I helped save the project, I think, because there was a lot of talk back then. Man. We were going through recession, yeah. you know, st all that stuff was going on. There was a the world was in a rough place and um, anyway the Raptor uh, thank God kept alive and it's now um, just one highest resale value vehicle in the US regardless of make top 10 and one of the reports so pretty amazing. Now I know Greg Fouts was big into that yeah and he actually was the one that built 
the actual vehicle yeah, that Greg, you guys raced. Yeah, Greg did an awesome job. Uh, he was contracted by Ford to build it, and he uh, he went ahead and built the thing in, I, I want to say in three months or something, and he practically did the whole project uh, literally by himself. I mean, he had help, but he, he, he was the mastermind behind laying it out and getting it running and did an awesome job. And the plan was to race the Baja 1000. Yes, to, to race the Baja 1000. At that time, there wasn't... Um, uh, I forgot all the rules, but we couldn't race it in the stock class, even though it was kind of a stock truck. So we entered it in class eight, and um, which is kind of fun. And um, so we ran, we entered this Raptor in class eight. And uh, um, anyway, I uh, I got to have uh, Greg Fouts with me, and and uh, Randy Merritt, and Bud, and Gene Marndale, who's a test driver. Ford was on the Viper team. Um, and uh, anyway, just a cool deal. It yeah, I remember three, it was a three seater too. I remember being there. Yep. And the names all over the truck were just huge. All yeah. you guys' names. Um, the, right here, the movie that Bud Brutzman put right. out called uh, Born in Baja. They still play that a lot on speed, yeah. yeah. If you haven't seen it, get a hold of it. it. It was a great movie. Actually, Greg Fouts in tears in this movie. And uh, Greg put a lot of work. You guys put a lot of R&D into this. And uh, it was cool. We, we did the night before, and you know the story, uh, the truck had a wiring electrical problem, and we did not think, oh, I don't know. I kind of thought we were going to make it, but then the part of me like, man, I'm not so sure. And they got that thing fired up, I want to say, about an hour before the start of the race. So um, pretty amazing deal. It was, a, it was a good deal, and just been, it's pretty cool that Ford came out with a vehicle that um, not only is a car you want to pull in to, uh, you know, the city center hotel in or whatever in valet, uh, but also go out to the race or use it for a pre-run or chase truck or whatever. It's a pretty amazing vehicle. Now, I know after you raced the 1,000, you and Rob uh, McCachron drove that the right. next year and had some great drivers, um, some NASCAR guys, yeah, some monster right. truck guys. Yep. Go ahead. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, we, we were fortunate. That was all the Ford PR deal, and uh, um, we've actually made some lifelong friends off it. Uh, the monster truck driver, Lindsey Wink, uh, came in, and uh, he, you know, he's still on the circuit driving the Lucas truck, whatever. And then uh, um, one of my favorites is uh, Greg Biffle, who is just here, in fact, in town. And um, anyway, just a cool guy. And uh, in fact, we, we want to try to get Greg more involved in the sport. He's a, he's a phenomenal driver, not just in NASCAR, but uh, really, you know, ask Rob. He's, uh, Rob got to race with him, too, in the Raptor, also an amazing driver. Because, you know, it was cool. You had three seats. Yep. And, uh, kind of like the monkey in the back, you know. Yeah, we always had the mechanic in the back. So, so yeah. But uh, did you guys look, I mean, Ford... You know, Cliff Irie, this is one of his ideas. Right. Um, really helped, uh, really put it on a map. Um, yeah, Cl Cliff ran that whole deal. Um, and uh, to deal with four or five different teams working together and everything that Cliff did, uh, he, he definitely deserves an award for that, uh, running truck motorsports. I mean, Cliff does an amazing job for, for Ford and the motorsports. And, um, you know, they're lucky to have a guy like him. Uh, Jamie Allison, who runs Ford Racing, has just got an incredible staff. I've got to go back there and meet these guys and work with them. And uh, it's, it's pretty cool that, um, you know, just like Ford's involvement in, in racing, they're, they're right now one of the, maybe the only manufacturer that's out there. You know, I, I really w wish that Chevrolet and, and Dodge or, or uh, Toyota or something would come, kind of come in, you know. But right now it's just Ford, and I look forward to the day when more manufacturers are involved in the sport. So, you know, you own in a dealership here in Vegas, Team Ford, right. was right up your alley when these things came out because they started, you were selling these things before they came out. It was funny about that is uh, a lot of people were afraid of the truck because they didn't know what it was. So I took everybody's allocation and that's how we became the number one Raptor dealer uh, in the world is because the first ones came out with only a 5.4 a liter, which actually was, is a phenomenal engine. Um, but the 6.2 was like uh, six or eight months down the road or whatever. So people were afraid of this truck, and I took everyone I can get. And at one time, I think we had close to 30 on the lot, and they were all gone within two weeks. So that was, it was a no-brainer for me. So it makes you the number one dealer in the world. Yep, we became the number one SVT, and, which is Raptor and Shelby's and all that in the world. And uh, year-to-date, um, some guys are chomping on my heels because they're you know, buying them and reselling them, but uh, it's just a, it's an awesome vehicle. Well, let's talk about... A new vehicle. You got a brand new truck. Yeah, really cool. Uh, got a brand new uh, 27 uh, Geyser, and uh, Rick, Rick and I and Jeff are, you know, good buddies. And uh, anyway, I was uh, John and I run the 28 truck for a couple seasons and, and did awesome with it. And 
the 28 is just an awesome truck and kind of looking to expand and grow, you know, add on to a little bit. Jonathan's been driving a lot with us, uh, as you know, and he's an yeah. awesome driver. So uh, anyway, I was looking for a used truck and started searching around. And of course, Rick gets a hold of me and says, hey, before you buy a, a new one, come check with me. And uh, so next thing I know, I'm at, uh, down in Phoenix at Rick's shop and he has me strapped in and getting some seat, you know, whatever. And uh, anyway, so it was, it was uh, we decided it was right around Halloween to, to build it or, you know, early November. And he had the Baja and all the stuff going on. And, and uh, I'll tell you, uh, Rick, you know, uh, was supposed to be ready. It was, the truck was going to be ready by the Parker race and it wasn't ready. But, you know, we got it here for the men and did an amazing job on it. It's just a, it's a VIN number 42. And it's, uh, I think Rob has the one right before it. Um, you know, right, you're just talking yeah. to Rob, but um, all laser cut. Um, just unbelievable truck and uh, as you know we had no test time on this truck because of some things that went on that had nothing with Rick Geyser but other stuff and uh, so I got the truck uh, the day before the Mint for qualifying first time I ever drove it. Wow and you guys did pretty good. Yeah we did good uh, ran up uh, in the top and uh, after the dust settled ended up uh, sixth place we had a hose come off the brake line and some you know it hit a rock or whatever but it was uh, just a it was a super soft Truck, I mean the Fox shocks, the you know Mastercraft, and and uh, you know everything, the KC lights, everything just worked perfect. You know, I mean to come out of the box, normally you know it takes yeah. you a few months to get the bugs out, you know, but that really shows uh, what Geyser did. Yeah, you know what? I had all the confidence in the world, and everybody asked me that question. Hey, are you nervous? You're coming in a big race or whatever, and and uh, and, and the points, were, you know, we we, we had a good. Uh, we did well, uh, John and I, uh, Jonathan Swift and I did well in the Parker race. And um, so I wanted to keep the points going. And uh, I was never worried. I just had all the confidence, uh, you know, uh, with the Dugan motor and the Rancho Tranny and, and um, you know, trail ready wheels and just all, all, all the sponsors, same ones been with us. And they all came aboard and we just have awesome sponsors. And I, I was never worried. I never lost sleep over it. So this year you'll finish up driving the uh, 27. Yeah, we're doing the 27, and uh, John and Jonathan Swift are going to be in the 28, and um, and the paint schemes are very similar. Uh, they're kind of reversed, and uh, they they look they look awesome. So when you see the uh, BFG Mastercraft and uh, Impact trucks, uh, Fox shocks going down the road, uh, they're pretty cool. All right, it's pretty uh, pretty amazing. You can see the truck right here. Um, another thing, um, we're at your dealership All right. right here, and. Uh, it, it's beautiful place, and I know there's a lot of things that you offer people out there that are watching. Right. If you want a new vehicle, you'll fly them here. Yeah. It, it's, it's something we did. Uh, uh, a lot of our um, customers live in uh, California. A lot of racers live in California or Arizona. A lot live here, too. So we just did a deal where um, we have, it's called Team Air, Team Ford Air, and uh, we pay your airfare anywhere in the U.S. to come in uh, when you be, uh, get a vehicle from us. And um, it's just something we started for fun. And, you know, the interesting thing about it is the racers, I don't know how many times I'll tell you that um, they, won't, they don't want reimbursement. And I have to force it on them. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just pretty cool. And then we got guys like the McMillans who uh, come in and I pick them up at the airport or Gus Valdosla and those guys, they fly on in. And uh, I just, you know, they're just the coolest. So, you know, we're fortunate to just have some great friends in the off-road world and that support us through thick and thin. And, um, we don't forget about them. You know, we, we, we take care of the racers and they take care of us. And there's a lot of trucks, pre-runners, oh, yeah. everything out there with Team Ford all over them. We, we, uh, we have a license plate frame that says Team Ford. I'd rather be racing, to, taking off the uh, uh, sports chalet or whatever. You know, I'd rather be playing soccer or whatever. And we made them up for fun and we just started, you know, put them up and selling them. Our parts department has been sold out of them three times. So now we're ordering them like 3,000 at a time. So when you go to race and you see those, it's funny how... Um, we put them on the, you know, for all the Raptors or chase trucks or whatever, but we actually sell a lot out of the, out of the, the parts department. It's kind of funny. It just started off as a fun thing we did, and now it's a, it's a little profit center for us. All right. Well, yeah. Steve, thank you very much hey, once again for, for joining us on Dirt Live. Beautiful place here at Team Ford. Well, we're going to go watch this video. When we come back, we're going to be joined by Roger Norman. Stick around. Dirt Live. Dirt Live, promoting racers one interview at a time.